All righty, gang. Here we go. Here we go. It's 12 o'clock Pacific Standard Time, and it's time for another seminar with your saltwater guide. Whoopsie doodles. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Here we go. All right. It's, uh, oh, we got a little equipment malfunction there, but we're ready. We're on our way. We're doing it. All right, gang. Thanks for joining us today. We have a really good one for you today, but before we get started, we always got a little business to do first. So let's do a little business and then we'll get started. So don't forget, we got those contests going on. You just got two days left. We got the fish count, or excuse me, fish report over at yoursaltwaterguide.com. All you got to do is leave a fish report. And then Kelly's going to pick the best fish report. And we're going to give you a swag bag from one of our sponsors, Promar Ahi. We're going to give you a swag bag with some hats, some shirts, and some, some lures, some flash deception lures, and probably some rock cod squirts and whatever else they decide to throw in the bag over there at Promar. So all you got to do is leave a fish report over there. And then remember the other contest we have for that interview I did with Michael Folks inside sport fishing. Leave a comment, subscribe to our channel on YouTube, leave a comment on that uh, interview with Michael Folks, and then we're going to give you guys, we're going to pick one good comment, and we're going to give you a swag bag from your saltwater guide, some shirt, hat, coffee cup, and then inside sport fishing, throwing in a shirt and a hat also, so... Those are both easy contests to win. All you got to do is leave a comment and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Go to Your Saltwater Guide on YouTube and do that. And then remember, today is Opsin Fluorocarbon Thursday. Every Thursday, we talk about Opsin USA. And you can save 20% if you go to Opsin USA and type in the code YSWG. Order yourself some Opsin Fluorocarbon. You're going to have fluorocarbon anyway. Now, why does Captain Dave love Opsin? Well, it's clear. Now, I know there's plenty of companies out there selling pink fluoro and green and yellow and orange. Okay. The whole idea of using fluorocarbon is trying to get a bite. And you're trying to use something that the fish can't see. So why would you tie color on? It doesn't make sense to me. And I've only been fishing for a living for 48 years. So I really don't know anything anyway. I'm sure I don't know as much as you do. And I already know that by looking at all the comments on TikTok and Facebook. I had no idea. I, didn't even know, I don't even know how to tie up a boat or drive a boat or how to fish. I, I, I am just shocked at all the stuff I do not know how to do. But I do know one thing. If the floral carbon is colored, has a color on it, and you can see it because it has color, I guarantee you the fish that their whole life depends on not dying by eating a lure or a hook with a piece of floral carbon that's pink or orange or green. My God, clear is the only piece of floral carbon I would ever tie onto my line. Clear and Opsin makes clear floral carbon. That's how I fell in love with it. Then Greg found me and said, oh my gosh, you like my product? Here, let's give all your followers a discount. So now you can go to Opsin USA and type in YSWG, and you're going to save 20% on the floral carbon, and then you can get that shipped straight to your house. Another thing I love about this floral carbon is look at the way the spools all stick together. Greg's got a little niche. He, he put, a little magnet, put a little magnet in each one of these spools, and they all stick together. Pretty nice. And like I always say, when I have this on the bait tank, I'll throw my hooks right on there. It holds the hooks. So when you're fishing tuna or you're fishing whatever you're fishing for, you need some extra hooks. You just throw them right on the top of your floral carbon spool. It even holds treble hooks. Check that out. It holds them just fine because of the magnet on there. So those hooks are held right on there. Look at that. That's pretty cool, huh? So that's another great reason to have ops in floral carbon. It's clear. You get a discount. It's a magnet. They all the spools stick together, plus it's a tackle box. I mean, there's so many reasons why you want to have Opsin on your boat. So Opsin USA, go over there, put in the code YSWG, save some money. Everybody wants to save some money right now. One other thing, gang, your saltwater guide, the website, yoursaltwaterguide.com. 
Saturday is your last day for the 14 day free trial. If you, you haven't got in on the 14 day free trial, I don't know what you're waiting for. I mean, you can't even get a gallon of gas in the great state of California for $4.99. That's what it costs a month to be a member of my website and not have to suck at fishing anymore unless you're into that. If you love to suck at fishing, then do not go over there and sign up for my website. But if you're tired of following boats around and fishing for boats every time you go fishing, then you need to be a part of my website, YourSaltWaterGuide.com. The last thing I ever tell you to do is go follow boats around. You want to get out there, go look for fish. And there's no better way to find them than to go at YourSaltWaterGuide.com with uh, a slight little upgrade of your membership. You can have access to thousands of spots for a slight upgrade. You can have a game plan that I make custom every Thursday. And I post it on the website at 3.30 in the afternoon. That way on the weekend, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, when you want to go fishing, you have a plan of where to go and what to fish for. How bitching would that be to not have to go out there and drive around and follow boats all day? Well, that's what you get over at YourSaltWaterGuide.com. Check out the website, YourSaltWaterGuide.com, and you'll promise you won't be disappointed. So 14-day free trial ends in just a couple days. So there you go. All right, here we go. So today is... The fine art of tuna fishing. We have a phenomenal amount of bluefin just starting to move into our areas. The, the day boat, the San Diego out of San Diego had a dozen fish yesterday up to 70 pounds. That tells me they're getting real close to striking distance of coming across the border. So I think it's imperative that we talk about this tuna thing and what's going on and get you a little more honed in on how to fish for tuna in Southern California. So... There's a few things that I try to tell all my clients when I'm out fishing for them with them on their boat or when I was running charters up there in California. What I try to tell you is everything matters. When you go out there and you have a good game plan, you went to your saltwater guide or you went to Fish Dope or you went to Billy Kay's site, somehow, somewhere you got your information or you just talked to your plumber and he's told you that, Last year when he went out fishing that one day he went, he told, this is where we caught fish that one day. So you have some type of a plan, even if you got it from your plumber. And I love plumbers. I do, but I'm not taking fishing advice from them. But if that's where you get your advice, that's fine. You got to have a plan though. You get out there. Let's just say I, you went to my website and I said, hey, you want to start looking out on the 209 down to the 181 and maybe then swing back out to the 43 in the afternoon because that's where the fish are biting at. Well, the first thing I'm going to tell you is when you're about three or four miles from the area you're going to start in, slow down. Start to slow the boat down. Driving around at 20, 30 knots. I know your boat, or if you're Billy Kane, your boat does 100 miles an hour. That's all fine and dandy, but you cannot look through your binoculars when you're hauling ass. You just cannot see anything. You've got to slow down. And what I try to always do on the boats that I run is I get into the zone where I believe there's some fish. I'll throw a couple cedar plugs, you know, those ones that I talk about from Promar, the, the uh, cedar plug, the wood color, I'll throw a couple of those out behind the boat, the natural cedar plug. I'll throw a couple of those out. I'll slow the boat down to seven knots, six and a half, seven knots. I'll break out the gyro stabilizing binoculars. I'll turn the fish finder, the, the pedometer, if you will. You guys call it a fish finder. You call it, a, you call it whatever you want, but the damn machine's a pedometer. But you can call it elephant for all I care. But you turn your pedometer on. You set that range from zero on the top to 200 feet. So now your screen's looking at that area of the water because that's where you're going to find that tuna. Then you're going to put your feet up on the dash. You're going to put your gyro stabilizing binoculars up to your eyes and you're going to start to look. And you're going to, what are we looking for? Anything that is not water. Gang, I caught a hundred tuna off a spot that had one little tiny turn bird flying right above it looking. He kept looking down, looking down, looking down. And I knew that little guy was looking at something. I slid over there. I had my deck hands throw a scoop of bait in the water and boom, bluefin came up. And next thing you know, we were going home with full limits of fish. 
And that's because we are paying attention to everything and everything matters. If the ocean's flat, calm, like the table I'm sitting in front of, and you see a little bit of ripple on the water that looks like wind, but you know there's no wind, that's called a breezer. You're going to slide over in front of that, throw some bait in the water. Boom. Bendo. The boat looks like an umbrella. That means all the fishing poles on the boat are bent over. All these things matter, gang. And if you just get out there, you throw a couple lures over, and you grab a beer and a cigarette, you just sit back with your feet up on the dash, and you're not looking and you're not paying attention, then you're probably not going to catch anything because you're missing all the keys to tuna fishing. And it's a fine art, this tuna fishing. The guys that are successful day in and day out tuna fishing are the guys that are paying attention, are the gals, the, the people that are paying attention to everything on the water. Everything matters. I say this on every one of our seminars we talk about every week. Everything matters. Whatever you're doing, calico bass fishing, getting this bottle of water, getting the op opposite fluorocarbon, and you're, you went and you got some pink fluorocarbon instead of your op. All that matters. It's all going to matter. But what matters the most is paying attention, gang. You have to pay attention when you're out there on the water. It's not a time to drink beer, and it's not a time to smoke cigarettes, and it's not a time to eat your boogers. It is an absolute time to pay attention to the water. I had a question come up the other day on an interview I did. What would you rather get not have? Would you rather not have? Now, most of the yachts I run have a sonar. Those cost 60 grand. You don't have one on your private boat, I promise you. Would they ask me, would you rather have... If you had to give up one thing, would you give up your sonar or would you give up your gyro stabilizing binoculars? I'd give up the sonar. The gyro stabilizing binoculars have saved me many times. My sonar saved me many times also. But the gyros, man, if I don't have my gyros, if I don't have my binoculars, my $6,000 pair of binoculars, if I don't have those, I feel like I'm driving around out there blind. And I know y'all can't afford a pair of binoculars that cost six grand. Now that a now that a hundred gallons of fuel costs you six grand, I understand. But you got to have a really good pair of binoculars, not a pair of field glasses that you use to watch your kids' little league game. You got to have a really good pair of binoculars, and it's super important. What am I looking at when I'm staring into those binoculars all day on the boat? I'm looking for anything like I keep saying that isn't water. I've caught tuna on a cardboard box. My buddy Chris Goble used to run the freelance and I caught yellowfin tuna on a jacket that was floating in the water one day. Anything floating can congregate bait. If there's bait and there's tuna around, there's a pretty good chance those tuna are going to be somewhere near the food. Kelp patty, perfect example. Bluefin, yellowfin, albacore, caught them all on kelp patties, Dorado, yellowtail, but tuna, as far as tuna goes, caught all different types of tuna on a piece of seaweed floating in the ocean. On the West Coast, we call them kelp patties. On the East Coast, you call it serrazo grass. Same thing. Why are the fish hanging out on these pieces of stuff floating on the water? Because the bait congregates under there and all the fish in the ocean are swimming around looking for something to eat. So you've got to find where the bait congregates. Many times I've seen guys fishing on a school of bait. Sometimes bait comes up to the surface to feed just like regular fish. And sometimes it'll just be bait and it won't be any fish. And if you get on a school of bait, you're just standing there all day fishing. I feel sorry for you. You're not going to catch anything. You're looking for fish. Fish are, if you are stopping on stuff this big, you're going to have to use a really small hook. You might have to get one of your trout hooks out if you're trying to catch those. But not very often will the bait come up to the surface to feed if there's tuna, hungry tuna underneath of them waiting to eat them. So it's super important to pay attention to everything. And like I keep saying, everything matters. So when you get out there on your boat, slow down and start looking and start paying attention and learn how to use your fish finding apparatus. Set that depth finder. We call it a photometer. 
you call it your sonar, your fish finder, whatever you want to call it, the machine, set it up on manual, not auto. Why does, why do you guys all run it on auto? Cause you're scared to death of the machine. And when the guy put it in the installer, I'm not taking anything away from installers are great. And I love installers. I love them installing my unit, but gang, you can't take anything away from time on water and the installers don't have that. You want to listen to the guys that are out there on the water every day. I get my information from some of the best captains in the world. They talk to me and we talk on the telephone and we talk and I'm telling you that machine can be your friend if you learn how to use it and take it off of auto and put it on manual and you control what you're looking at on that depth finder, the pedometer. And on your private boat, most of you, your boat's under 50 feet long. You're not holding an epic amount of bait. There's not a good chance of you to bring fish up that are deeper than 200 feet down. I like to use my machine from 100, from zero to 150 feet because I know that if they're in that range, those fish are going to come up to the surface and feed. If I'm fishing on a bigger boat with a sonar, I'm looking at that 500 foot depth. I'm looking in that zone straight out in front of me. And then on the up and down, I'm looking at 300 feet. Once that fish gets in that 100 foot zone, when they're underneath the water 100 feet down, there's a really good chance you're going to catch them. Because I don't know how fast you can walk 100 feet, but a fish only has to flick his tail once and he swam 100 feet just like that. And he's swimming around looking up. And then here comes your rubber flying fish or here comes your dead flyer or here comes your scoop of bait. Hits that water and all those tuna swim up to the surface as fast as they can to eat because that's what they're there for is to eat. And I get really excited when I talk about fishing because I'm super passionate about it and I want you all to be successful when you go fishing. So if all these things make sense and all these things sound really interesting and you want to be better at all this, go to my website, yoursaltwaterguide.com, gang, and sign up and go look at the 400 plus videos that are just like the seminar we're doing today. And I explain each and every thing to you. White sea bass fishing, yellowtail fishing, halibut fishing, calico bass fishing, giant bluefin fishing, yellowtail fishing, yellowfin tuna fishing, dorado fishing, whatever it is. I've got videos on how to do it better than anybody. Yes, because I've had to fish for a living for the last 48 years. And I'm not a specialist on any type of fish. I don't get to be that because I can't make a living being a specialist. I had to be able to evolve and be able to fish for everything that swims in Southern California because my kids and my wife, they want to eat food every damn day. They don't want to eat food for that month and a half that that tuna shows up in Southern California. They don't want to eat for that six months that that lobster shows up in Southern California, they want to eat year round. So I learned how to fish for whatever was biting year round. If that's hoop netting for lobsters in the winter time or fishing for calico bass in the winter time or fishing for tuna in the summertime, whatever it is, we figured it out. And I had a network of captains that are way better at fishing than I am that taught me all the nuances of how to do it. And if you're watching other these superstars of fishing that are 15 and 17 and 22 years old, and you're getting your information. I'll just tell you about me. I don't want to know what a 22 year old knows. Sorry. <laughs> he might be the nicest 22 year old kid you've ever met in your life, but I don't want to know what he knows. I want to know what the guys that have gone through the cycles, the guys that have been doing it for 40 years, 50 years, 60 years, and have seen the cycles and have seen the things. And that's what you get over at YourSaltWaterGuide.com. I'm not trying to prop me up and say I'm the greatest, but I have information that most of those children do not possess. And if somebody's telling you they went out there and figured it out on their own, they're full of poop. They did not figure nothing out on their own. They learned from people like myself that have been doing it for a living for more than 40 years. And that's where they got their information. And gang, that's what I offer you over at YourSaltWaterGuide.com. Check out my website, YourSaltWaterGuide.com. It'll change what you catch from this point forward. Go get some Opsin fluorocarbon. I promise you, if you fish with Opsin, it will change what you catch also. 
Clear fluorocarbon is the key. Uh, you can't even see this piece of fluorocarbon unless I spin it around. If it was pink or orange or red or yellow, you'd see it all day long. Think about that. Every time you tie something onto your line from today forward, think about it. Can I see it? If you can see it, you know that fish can see it. All right, gang, that's my show for today. I hope you enjoyed yourself. I will be with you tomorrow, ProTech Offshore Friday. We'll be talking about something really cool. I can't tell you what it is yet because I don't know what the hell I'm talking about every day until I go live. All right, gang, I will be there for you tomorrow. I promise. Have a great day. Be kind to each other. Turn off the news. They're all lying to you. Go out and have fun. Enjoy your weekend. Look at the game plans at yoursaltwaterguide.com. If you suck and you're tired of sucking, go to my website, yoursaltwaterguide.com. Bye. Da-da-da, da-da-da.